I have decided to play Spin the Wheel Exotic Animal Edition. One, two, three. What are we gonna land on? What is up everyone and welcome back to the channel. I hope all of you are having just an absolutely amazing day. Now for today's video, well, I have decided to play Spin the Wheel Exotic Animal Edition. I have a Spin the Wheel set up with all sorts of exotic animals on the wheel and whatever animal we land on, I'm gonna buy. It's gonna be absolutely amazing. I mean, there's a wide variety of animals. There's tortoises, kangaroos, emus, sloths, otters. There is a plethora of incredible animals on there. And here it is, we're here. Here. we're on it so I don't have a printer at my new house so I wasn't able to you know put pictures of everything but what we have on here is we have a sloth a goat an emu Galapagos tortoise a kangaroo and otters so basically what is gonna happen is I'm gonna do a couple trial runs I'm gonna spin the wheel a couple times just to kind of get the feel of it we're gonna do that twice and then on the third attempt that is going to be the third and final attempt we're gonna spin it and whatever it lands on we are going to buy it's gonna be absolutely amazing Cliff hey you over there I've got to recruit Cliff's help so he can help me spin the wheel Cliff is behind the camera We've got our spin the wheel here. We're gonna walk over here. Like I was saying, we've got all kinds of good stuff here. And what's really cool about this wheel too, is back in the day, my grandpa was a big diver, spear fisherman, and this was a ship wheel that actually came off of a shipwreck, so it's pretty cool. So we're gonna do a couple spin runs on this. We're gonna spin it a couple times. We're gonna see what it lands on. We're gonna start right now with spin number one. We're gonna take this wheel now. Right, let's, just, let's just give it a try. Let's go one, two, three. All right, we landed on emu for number one. Okay, all right, emu for number one. Let's go for number two. We're gonna spin it the opposite way. One, two, three. Don't fall, don't fall. And let's see what we're gonna land on. Ah, up. Ah. Well, it's closest. Oh, huh. I forgot to even give you guys a, uh, I forgot to even tell you guys our reference point here, basically where our arrow is. We don't have a red arrow, but we're using this pole as the arrow. Whichever one of these notches lands closest to this post right here is the winner. So for the second spin, obviously the Galapagos tortoise was the one that landed closest. So I could use another Galapagos tortoise. I got two of them and a third one would be a nice addition. But this was our second try. So we're not going to get a Galapagos tortoise. We are going to go right now for our third and final spin. Whatever it lands on is what we're going to be buying. So it's going to be amazing. Guys, go right now and comment down below what you guys think it's going to land on. I mean, personally, I prefer if it landed on the otter, the kangaroo, a sloth, or the emu. Because I don't have any of those animals and they're really cool. Goats are cool too, don't get me wrong. But I would rather have one of those animals. Galapagos tortoise would be amazing too. But we're gonna find out now, we're gonna go right now. We're gonna spin it. This is our third attempt. This is the moment of truth. What exotic animal are we gonna land on today? And now we're gonna go and we're gonna spin. We're gonna see what are we gonna land on. All right, <laughs> emus, that's it. I guess we're gonna get an emu. Well, it's baby season for emus. I actually know a couple of breeders, but the breeders I know are kind of far. So guys, I'm gonna have to make a couple phone calls. I'm gonna see if we can get an emu down here today, whether there's one local, maybe one up north. We're gonna see, but that's what we're getting, guys. We're getting a little emu, but go right now, guys, and comment down below, what kind of an emu should we get? Should we get a blonde emu, or should we get a brown emu? The blonde ones are leucistic. I'm thinking I get one, Depending on what's available, I think I get one blonde one and two dark ones. But I'm going to have to make a couple phone calls, and I'll be back with all of you once I make these calls. Let's pull out my phone. I know a couple emu guys. Let's, I'm going to give them a call now and see if they have some babies. One hour later. Okay, you're going to pick it up at four? Okay, perfect. Amazing. Guys, my friend Stephanie is actually up in Orlando, and she is going to be picking me up an emu now. That's the closest emus available. I called the emu guys. There's only one blonde emu available right now. He has one that's starting to hatch, but it's not ready just yet. But just so happens, my very good friend Stephanie is up in Orlando at Animal Kingdom, and she's coming back today. So she's gonna do me a huge favor. She's gonna go pick up this adorable little emu. Guys, this is a picture of him right here. The breeder just sent me this picture. Look at him. He just hatched three or four days ago. It's going to be absolutely amazing. I cannot wait to get this emu. Now, while we wait for this emu to get here, it's going to be about four or five hours. We've, I've got to show all of you a couple of updates around the house and some projects I have going on. 
So the first of the two projects I have going on here is I am actually converting this slab right outside of my house into an enclosure for baby animals. So whenever I actually have little baby animals, whether it be a little otter, whether it be a little leopard, I will be able to have this little animal while it's still kind of coming in at nighttime, but also going outside during the day. He can come out here to this slab, which is directly off of my house, and we're going to be completely enclosing this in. So I have these big old posts. I mean, I went with the best of the best. I have these big, thick, about eight inch posts that are set about four feet into the ground. You can see this is one beefy giant enclosure. So this eventually is gonna be converted. In the next three days or so, the project's gonna be complete. What we have to do is we've gotta actually set these poles in. You can see actually here just how deep the hole is. Focus, focus, you can see. Look at this when I drop a rock in. It goes in there pretty deep. This is going to be absolutely amazing. One night I thought of it and it's just a great idea to actually convert this into a habitat. Since I live my life every day surrounded by the most incredible animals on the planet, I decided to incorporate an enclosure right off of my house. I'm so excited to see how it turns out. It's gonna be incredible and I can't wait to share it with all of you. And here is project number two. So basically what I'm doing is the entire perimeter fence around my entire property is being raised all the way up to eight and a half feet. Now the reason I have to raise my fence to eight and a half feet is to actually hold certain wildlife permits. I have to have the fence at a minimum of eight feet to actually have these permits for certain animals. So in order for me to get some of these permits, I have to raise the fence to eight and a half feet. So I am doing just that. It's gonna be a long two week process, but you can see we're getting started before the fence was six feet. Now we have these massive eight foot poles which are getting concreted in. You can see my hand only touches right there and we're going all along the perimeter of the property. The work at the zoo never stops and I'm trying to build an amazing facility here and I think I am off to the right start and I'm so glad I'm able to share it with all of you. So now that you guys get to see some of the projects I have going on here, well, I will be back with all of you once the emu arrives. Well guys, the new baby bird has arrived and here he is. We have a new little baby emu for the property. I've wanted an emu for quite some time. And not only is this an emu, this is a blonde emu. Now the blonde emus, when they're full grown, are gonna be all white. And that is because they are actually leucistic, meaning they have a lack of pigmentation. The regular emus are gonna look just like this. They're gonna be dark, they're gonna be black. Then the white emus look just like this and they're gonna be white and beautiful. Now this one still has some of that dark spots right there, but as he gets older, as he molts some feathers, he's gonna turn all white. And now this little bird right here is actually the second largest bird in the world. These little guys when full grown are gonna be around 80 pounds and they are just gonna stand about six feet tall. He's gonna follow me around everywhere. That's what little emus do. Come this way, buddy. This way, come on. Follow me this way. Come here, little guy. Come here. Let's take this box. We're gonna throw the box that way and we've got our little emu right here. Come here, little guy. Come here. Now, for those of you that don't know, birds are actually the closest living relatives to the dinosaurs. So a lot of people think reptiles are, but it's actually birds. So if you come look at his little feet, look at those scaly dinosaur feet. Where are you going, buddy? Let me show you these scaly dinosaur feet. These little guys have scaly dinosaur feet. Oh, you're eating some grass right there. These guys have scaly dinosaur feet. And when he's older, you're gonna be able to see it. Oh my gosh, I am so happy to have one. This guy is so incredibly cool. He just wants to stay close by me. And he's just an absolutely amazing kid. Let's get some exercise in those legs. Now he's only about four days old, but you can see, even at four days old, these guys are born running. They're born ready to rock and roll. And this guy is no exception. Let's go this way, come on. You are so cute, come on this way, come on, come on. Now, obviously we got a new little animal here today. And that means we've got to come up with a name for this little guy. Now in the future, I'm I'm actually going to get another two emus. So I'm gonna have about three emus. I might even get a fourth emu. I'm not entirely sure, but make sure to comment down below a little name for this guy. He's a white emu. Guys, I'm thinking we should name him after the Game of Thrones dragons, Drogon. But I just wanna know what you guys think. If you guys think of a better name, comment it down below that name and I'll be sure to consider it. But I'm thinking Drogon is gonna be the name for this little guy. You're absolutely adorable. You wanna run around. You're a cute little kid. Come on this way, come on. Let's go, follow me. Follow me this way, guy. Let's go, let's go, let's go. So now that this guy has gotten some time out here in the yard, he's we're gonna put him back in his little carrier box right there and we're gonna go inside and set up his new habitat. 
And we're here, we're inside, and this right here, for those of you that are new to the channel, this room in here is actually my indoor baby room. So any baby animals that I have actually live right off of my bedroom. This is my bedroom here. So I have easy access to all the animals now. We still have a little bit of work to do in here. We're gonna put some wallpaper, we're gonna fix the floors up, but this is where the little emu is gonna be. So since he's a tiny little emu, he's gonna be staying in this big old black bin. Now to get this bin prepared for this emu, we're gonna take this nice towel in here and we're just gonna put the towel in here this towel is gonna give him a little traction against this slippery plastic and the towel is gonna absorb any poop and pee now every single morning this is gonna be cleaned out he's gonna get fresh food fresh water a fresh towel we want to make sure our animals stay nice and healthy nice and clean so this is his little setup right here we've got this towel now we have our water dish here we're gonna take this water dish we're gonna flip it on over and look at that We've got a nice water dish right here. Now this is probably gonna spill, it might. We got water for him, he can't really tip that over. He's gonna have access to fresh, clean water. And we have some food. So this little baby emu is actually on what any little baby chick would be on, chick's medicated, chick starter feed, the stuff you can get at any feed store, Amazon, super cheap. It was like $7 for the bag, I think. $6.99 at Sunset Feed, good stuff. And we're gonna take this little cup right here and we're gonna scoop us some emu food in here. Look at that. We've got some nice food. So as he's young, he's gonna be on this. But once he gets older, he's actually going to be on a Missouri diet. Missouri makes a rat tight diet because that's the kind of birds these are. These are called rat tights. And that is what he's gonna be on. So we're gonna take our food right here. We're gonna put it in here. That's where his food is gonna live. Now we wanna stretch this out so he has easy access. He's able to find it nice and easily. Now one of the most important parts of all is hooking up a red heat lamp. Little baby emus like this and all baby chicks need to be under a warm red heat lamp so they can maintain their body heat when they're young. They can't maintain their body heat that well. It's probably 75 degrees in here, but we need to heat it up. He needs to have a nice hot spot. So that is why right above here, we have a nice heat lamp hooked up. We're just gonna take this heat lamp right here. We're gonna plug it on in and look at that. We have a nice red heat lamp for this little emu so he can come here, bask under the heat lamp, or he can come right over here. Let's move this there and he, and he can come sit here where it's nice and cool. And buddy, it's time. You ready to go in your new home, Drogon? You ready for that, buddy? He is ready to get out of this little box. Come here, little guy. Come here, we're gonna pick you up with one hand just like this. Come here, little guy. We got you, we're putting you in. Here you go. You're in your new home, buddy. So this is where he's gonna live for now. This is plenty big for a tiny little emu chick. We don't wanna give him too large of a space where he's not gonna be able to find his food and water. As he gets older, we'll upgrade his size. And then eventually this little guy is going to get some friends and he's going to live outside. And that, my friends, is going to end today's episode. I hope all of you guys did enjoy watching today's Spin the Wheel Exotic Animal Edition. Guys, if you enjoyed today's video, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Remember to go comment down below a name for this little baby emu. And guys, if you're not subscribed already, you want to see this little baby emu grow up, you want to see tigers, lions, turtles, and tortoises, well, what are you waiting for? Go right now and hit that subscribe button and tap that little notification bell, and you all be notified whenever I post.